want to turn to uh, this interview with juror B37 in the Zimmerman trial. She was shrouded in shade, I guess, or what, what is the word I'm looking for? Shadow on, uh, on CNN. She has uh, since lost her book deal that uh, she and her husband were uh, planning to write. I, I'm, not, I'm not judging uh, this person. I have no idea. I'm sort of surprised. If the, if the jury was made up of people like this, uh, the prosecutor failed in some respects. But there was a couple of things that she said. And for the most part, let me make this clear. You know, I haven't been terribly interested in the actual machinations of the trial because, and I've got a piece uh, by Ty Nahasi Coates, which I think explains that. Uh, but this stuff is pretty stunning. One of the things, we don't have this on sound, but one of the things she started off by saying was, she said, this is a quote, it was just hard thinking that somebody lost their life and there's nothing else that could be done about it. I mean, it's what happened. It's sad. It's a tragedy this happened, but it happened. And I think both were responsible for the situation they had gotten themselves into. I think both of them could have walked away. It just didn't happen. This is impossible to imagine. In what universe could Trayvon Martin walk away from this situation? He was already walking away from this situation. And he is obviously confronted by somebody who he doesn't know, who he may or may not have known had a gun. I don't know how he would have known it unless it was brandished. And a guy who was clearly had hostile intent. And even if it wasn't clear, it would have been perfectly rational for Trayvon Martin to assume the guy had hostile intent. The guy was bigger than him and had been following him. What do you say to that person? What, what would Trayvon Martin have done and how do you start to run? I mean, God, what do you say? Excuse me, I know you've been following me, but uh, it's obviously a misunderstanding, and can we just call it quits? It is really disturbing that the juror had this in their head. That somehow both these guys found themselves into a situation. It was just one of those situations, and they both could have equally had the ability to defuse the situation. It's simply impossible to imagine how that could have happened from Trayvon Martin's perspective. Anderson Cooper went on to ask her more questions. This is uh, number one uh, on our sound sheet. Anderson Cooper. What did you think of George Zimmerman? I think George Zimmerman is a man whose heart was in the right place, but just got displaced by the, the vandalism in the neighborhoods and wanting to catch these people so badly that he went above and beyond what he really should have done. But I think his heart was in the right place. It just went terribly wrong. Above and beyond? First off, everyone else in that community had been subjected to everything that Trayvon Mar that uh, Robert uh, that uh, Zimmerman had been subjected to. None of them did what this guy did. What does above and beyond mean in this instance? She perceived him as going just a little bit too far in his self-appointed duty. And again, it was. Everything is in the passive voice. There is no acknowledgement here that Zimmerman created this entire situation. There was hundreds of other people who lived in that community. But only Zimmerman found himself in this situation. Just, it just, he was transported there. She's describing somebody who is unstable. You know, I think it was a very high bar, second degree murder. But manslaughter here just seems to me, I don't know. Let's go to number two. 
So you think, based on the testimony you heard, you believe that Trayvon Martin was the aggressor? I think the rules changed. I think, I think George got in a little bit too deep, which he shouldn't have been there. But Trayvon decided that he wasn't going to let him scare him and get the one over up on him or something. Um, and I think Tra Trayvon got mad and attacked him. And now, now let's just stipulate that maybe this was the instance, but the the intent that she divines from Trayvon Martin's action for Trayvon Martin, this was just simply a a, a test of his manhood, not a question of survival, not a question that he was under threat by some guy uh, chasing him, uh, following him in the dark in a place he didn't know. This was a question of he why he just his ego would not allow him to disengage in her mind. This just gives you a sense of the state of mind of this jury, that somehow this was about him proving his manhood. This is a person who during jury selection said that she doesn't watch the news because you never get the full story. Well, I mean, look, uh, the, the, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, she is looking into the mind of Trayvon Martin and presumes that for him this is about his manhood. He needed something to prove. He had a chip on his shoulder. He wouldn't let it go. There's no basis whatsoever for her to make this assessment. This guy's being followed. The idea that he doesn't feel threatened is absurd. It's the third one. And this is, again, the attachment that this woman has for George Zimmerman is pretty stunning. Is George Zimmerman somebody you would like to have on a neighborhood watch in your community? If he didn't go too far. I mean, you can always go too far. He just didn't stop at the limitations that he should have stopped at. So, I don't, is that a yes or that you, if he didn't go too far? Is See that? Uh, now, Anderson Cooper is like, wait, wait, wait. If he didn't go too far. This is the point. The guy has shown a fairly substantial, and this is without knowing any of his background, which we now know, a fairly substantial propensity for going too far. Too farness. Yes. Is somebody prone, you think, to going too far? I mean, I, is this somebody I, I you would feel comfortable? Frustrated. I think he was frustrated with the whole situation in the neighborhood, with the break-ins and the robberies, and they actually arrested somebody not that long ago. Um, I, I, I mean, I would feel comfortable having George, but I think he's learned a, a good lesson. So you would feel comfortable having him now because you think he's learned a lesson from mm -hmm. all of this? Exactly. I think he just didn't know when to stop. He was frustrated, and things just got out of hand. People have now remarked subsequently that he gets his gun back, and there are some people who have said the idea that he gets a, is, can have a gun worries them. Does that worry you? That doesn't worry me. I think he'd be more responsible than anybody else on this planet right now. Well, now, the juror now uh, suggests a, a good way of teaching people about gun safety. Shoot an unarmed kid once, chances are really good you won't do it again. It, it's just, it's stunning. And um, it, it just gives you a sense of what was going on in that jury room. I find it really disturbing because she's almost framing the death of Trayvon, like you're saying, as just a cautionary lesson for George. And I love how she calls him George. That's, that's actually what yeah. Zimmerman said, essentially, in the Hannity interview last year. He said it was in God's plan. And he wouldn't alter God's plan. Well, the, the, so is the, God's plan that that's Trayvon's the whole thing is that she buys into this notion that Zimmerman had no agency here. It was he was frustrated. He had he was compelled by forces outside of him to get into that situation, and then it just went awry. He made a mistake. He made a mistake, and he certainly learned his lesson now. You know, look, I I. There is a real sort of like, 
and, and I hesit hesitate to say this, and I, I have no idea who this juror is, I don't know anything about the jury, any of this, but there's this real sort of like fundamentalist Christian mentality here, right? He's been redeemed. He's been redeemed. It's God's plan, and he's been redeemed by God. He's learned his lesson. He's got a good heart. It's just that the outside forces were working on him. It wasn't his fault that Trayvon was black. It wasn't his fault that, you know, there was all these uh, uh, black people doing break-ins and that black people are more prone to violence. And This is all the unstated aspects of what she's saying. If you dig deeper with this woman, this is where it leads to. And I don't even think that she would necessarily think there's anything wrong in those beliefs. I think these are just the beliefs that she walks around with, and this is the mentality that also drove Zimmerman, although I think this guy's also a couple of, uh, you know, cards short of a, deck, a full deck. Uh, 